Hello, fourth graders. It's Mrs. Evans here. I hope your Thursday is off to a great start. Our language lesson for today is actually going to be a little bit different. Um, we have our very first mobile learning assessment. So I wanted to walk you through how that is going to work and how it is going to be similar to assessments that we've done in the past but also a little bit different. Um, for those of you, for my Emeralds who are in my math class, some of this will look familiar to you, but some of it is different. So be ready for that, okay? Um, so today is our very first day of our um, mobile learning assessments. This is my opportunity to see how much you have been learning and growing over the past two weeks. Um, as we're getting started, let me remind you of how our tests and quizzes would work in the past. Typically, you would see this screen up on the board or on the monitor, and it would be a very quiet uh, place because we were busily passing that test or passing that quiz. Well, this was before mobile learning, and things are gonna look a little bit different now that we're doing our tests and quizzes um, through this different avenue. So a couple of things that are different is that you will not need to get out your week at a glance for this test and quiz because there is no need to cover your work. There's no other students in or there's no other fourth graders, I should say, in your home with you. Um, so there's no need to cover your answers. There's also no need to feel like you have to finish within the typical 30 minute test span for our language tests. So those are a couple of things that we do not have to be concerned about. As we're moving forward, here are some do's and don'ts about our assessments. This assessment is to be done independently. That means all by yourself. Just like in the real classroom, if you had a question, there really wasn't much I could offer for assistance to you because this is not my test. This is not your parents' test. This is a, a way for you to show me what you have learned and what you can do all by yourself. Keeping that in mind, parents and siblings may not assist you during this assessment. And they also cannot check your work before your assessment is due and uh, to be returned back to me. Thirdly, you may not use your book or other resources or other devices to assist you while you are taking this assessment. And for these three things, this is just like how it is in class. If you were taking a test in class, you wouldn't um, have your parents look it over before you turn it into me. You wouldn't get out a book and double check your work um, with what the glossary says or the, the yellow pages say, um, those yellow in information pages say. Um, so that, those are going to be run just like how we would in the classroom. When we're taking assessments, it's really your character that is counting in this moment. Of course, I am not in your home with you at this time to watch and make sure that we're doing this um, the way that we do it in class. So I'm really having to put my faith and trust in you that you're going to do this the right way and do it in a way that um, would bring honor and glory to God because that's really our most important thing. Um, remember, I am more concerned about your character than how well you do on this assessment time. Okay, here are some supplies that you are going to need. Now, this first one might throw you a little bit, but the first supply that you will need is your language book. I know what you're thinking. Mrs. Evans, you just told us not to refer back to your language book. I did. What I mean by that is you will not go back to any previous lessons and you will not go forward to any language handbook pages or pages that we've done in the future. You must stay on the pages that I've assigned for you today. That is the only um, time that you're able to use your language book is just for the pages that we're on for today, no other pages. You're also gonna need your pencil. When you have those two things out and ready, you're ready to start the next step. The next step is going to be your language test, which is already in your book. We have already done a cumulative review um, together 
even though you didn't realize it, we did that before you left on break. And we also did a little bit of that on Tuesday when you came back from spring break. We are using lesson 109 on pages 215 through 216 to act as our test over this particular language chapter. Now, when you're finished with your test, here are some things to keep in mind. Yes, you will need to turn your test in, but you'll turn it in a little bit differently. How you will turn in your test is you will either be texting me or emailing me a picture of your finished assessment. Assessments are due each Friday before our one o'clock class Zoom meeting. So if this is Thursday, Thursday morning, and it's not due until Friday at one o'clock, you have over 24 hours to finish this assessment. I caution you, please do not wait until the last minute to get this done. But I don't want you to feel pressured like you have to finish this in the typical classroom time, okay? Plus, I don't know what your day is like in your home. So you might have something that mom or dad has to get finished today and this will give you a little bit of extra time for that. Once again, your assessment for today is due to me by Friday at one o'clock before our class Zoom meeting, okay? You will be turning in your assessment through a text message or through emailing me a picture of both of the pages. Now, um, as we're getting started, I'm actually gonna do, walk you through a couple of these because it has been a little while since we've done um, this chapter. So don't panic. I want everybody just to take a breath. <sighs> okay, if you haven't already, go ahead and get out the supplies that you need, your pencil and your language book, and turn to page 215. Let's look at the instructions for section one together. Section one says, underline the verb twice, write present, past, or future to show the tense of each verb. I'm going to do number one together with you. Number one, the raindrops splatter on the window pane. According to my directions, I need to find my verb. Remember, my verb is the action that's taking place in this sentence. It might be helpful for me to find the star of my sentence or the subject because the subject is typically the one that is doing that action. My subject here is raindrops. What is the action the raindrops are doing? Splatter. Take your pencil and underline splatter two times. We always underline our verbs twice. Now that our verb has been correctly identified and underlined two twice, underlined two times, excuse me, now it's time for us to ask our questions of what time is this verb taking place? Is it taking place right now or continuing to take place? Has it already happened or has it not happened yet, but it's going to later on? Well, because I don't see the helping verb will, I know this is not a future tense verb. Because I don't hear a d at the end, that's another indicator that it is not a past tense verb. But this verb is happening right now. Verbs that happen right now, we refer to them as present tense. Let's write that in the blank. Okay, we did number one together. What I would like for you to do is to go ahead and do numbers two through five in this same way. I would like for you to pause the video and replay it as soon as you're finished with number six. You may begin. Okay, welcome back. Um, I think I misspoke there. Hopefully you were able to finish down to number three. Five, I apologize, and we're gonna do number six together, okay? All right, number six says to underline the simple subject once and underline the correct verb twice. Let's do six and seven together. Number six, the plants sprout 
or sprouts new leaves every week. Who or what is this entire sentence about? Plants. Underline plants one time. Now we need to find the correct verb. One has an S, one does not. Let's go back and ask a couple of questions about our subject. Is our subject singular or is it plural? It's plural because it ends with an S. Remember, this is like what I said for volleyball. If the volleyball is the S, we're not going to have a volleyball over here too, okay? Keep the volleyball on this side of the net or that side of the net, but we're not going to have it on both sides. So since this ends with an S, we're going to choose the one that does not end with an S. Underline sprout two times. This is plural. We need to have a plural verb. Plural verbs do not end in S. Let's look at number seven. Number seven says, a strange light flash or flashes in the side yard every 10 minutes. Sounds like a rainstorm, kind of like what we had last week during our spring break. Who or what is the entire sentence about? Well, some of you might say strange, but strange is not the item that is doing the flashing. It's actually the light. Light is our subject. Now let's ask if we have a singular subject or a plural subject. We have a singular subject here, just one light. Since we have a singular subject, we must have a singular verb. Singular verbs end in S. Let's underline flashes two times. Remember, it needs to be flashes because the regular verb flash ends with an SH. C-H-S-H-S-X-Z, add an S behind the E, not just S, not just E. ES does it accurately. So flashes is the correct verb to underline two times. At this time, I would like for you to go ahead and do numbers eight through 15. I got my number correct this time. I said it correctly. Do numbers eight through 15, and then you can replay the video when you're finished. Okay, are we all set? For right now, we should have section A completed and we should have section B completed. Let's look together at the instructions for section C. Section C says, write the correct verb form using the verb and tense in parentheses. Let's try number 16. Number 16 says, Aaron bake an apple pie tomorrow. They would like for us to use future tense. And just in case you didn't notice, tomorrow is one of our clue words to let us know that it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen one day. We call that the future. When we're using a future tense verb, do you remember the helping verb that must come out in front? Will. I do not make any changes to this verb whatsoever if I'm talking about the future tense. Will bake is the correct verb that I need to have for the future tense. Okay, I would like for you to try numbers 17 through 20. Be on the lookout for some of those clue words like tomorrow, but just in case you miss it, they will give you the tense that they're wanting you to use at the end of each sentence. You may begin. Okay, how are we doing? At this time, we should be completed with sections A, B, and C. Let's go ahead and start section D by looking at the instructions together and trying one together. Section D says, underline the simple subject once. Underline the correct helping verb twice. 21, let's take a look. Seth have or has written a report about volcanoes. Who or what is this entire sentence about? Seth, underline your simple subject one time. Now, let's ask ourselves this question. Is Seth singular or is Seth plural? Seth is singular. Singular means one. Because Seth is singular, we need to have a singular helping verb. Singular verbs end in 
S. I will underline has two times. You go ahead and try underlining your simple subjects once and underline the correct helping verb two times in numbers 22 through 26. You may begin. At this time, we should have completed section D. Let's look at the instructions together for section E. Section E says, read each pair of sentences. Fill in the circle next to the correct sentence. Color in the circle neatly, completely, and darkly. We will not be doing one of these together. You may do this section on your own. You may begin. At this time, we should have completed section E. Let's move on to section F. Section F says, underline the correct verb twice. We will not be doing a sample one together. You may do this section on your own. All right, students, we have come to the end of our very first mobile learning assessment. Here's what you need to do at this time. You need to double check your work all by yourself. Please do not ask a sibling or a parent to help you with this. Just like you would not be able to have their assistance in the classroom, we're not able to have their assistance outside of the classroom. Once you have thoroughly checked your assessment on the front and the back, you might need your parents' assistance by taking a picture of the front and the back and emailing or texting that picture to me. Your parents, of course, may assist you in taking the picture and sending the email or the text message if you need to. All assessments are due to me by tomorrow, which is Friday, before one o'clock by the time our class Zoom meeting begins. Okay, students, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.